Today, I'm going to go over variances. And to calculate a variance in Excel is really easy. All you're doing is taking one data point and subtracting another from it. But to do some meaningful variance analysis, what you may want to do is dig a bit deeper. You know, group, group the variances. Maybe uh, use charts, conditional formatting, pivot tables, things like that to help summarize it and to make it easier to identify trends and patterns and gaps. And those are the things that I'm going to cover in this video. And so in front of me, I've got data from the S&P 500 over the past over the past year and the closing values each day. And so this is a useful example just because stock prices move every day. And so the S&P 500 is always going to have a variance regardless of how, how big or small. There's always going to be a change. And so the first thing I'm going to do is create a variance field. And again, to do that, all I'm doing is taking the closing value on one day, subtracting the, the previous value. I'm going to copy this all the way down. And now I've got my differences from one day to the next. So you can see on June 7th, it was down 3.37 points from the previous day. Now, that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot just because the value is over 4,000 anyways. And so the one thing that's always helpful when you're doing any kind of variance analysis is using percentages to, to put those numbers into context. So I'm going to create another field called variance percentage. And to calculate the percentage, all I'm going to need to do is take the variance and divide it by the previous day's value. Now, obviously, this isn't a percentage. So the one thing I want to do is put this in the right format, the percentage format. Now, because it still shows 0%, that's not terribly helpful. And so what I'm going to do is add some decimal places. So I'm going to click this button twice here for two decimal places. And now I see it's down minus 0.08%. So that's a bit more useful. Now, obviously, you can add more decimal places depending on how specific you or how, how much detail you want in there. So I'm going to copy this all the way down. Now, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the last two values here just because there's nothing... Uh, previous because I just copied down the past year. But now I've got my variance and my variance percentages. Now, one thing you may want to do is, depending on how you're analyzing the data, is create a field to identify whether it's a positive or negative change, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. And to do this, I can just create a simple if statement and say, okay, if this is greater than zero, then it's positive. Otherwise, it's negative. And, and so sure, you could go to the filter option and just go to number filters greater than or less than. But, you know, if you've got slicers, or you just want to save a step or two, and you want to quickly look at all the positive or negative values, you could just click one of these. And now you see it right there without having to go through that. So not, not a huge issue, but obviously depending on how you're going to use it, just another way where you could filter uh, the data quickly. Now, let's say you didn't care about whether the values were positive or negative. There's what you can do is um, take the absolute value. And so that way you can just focus on whether the variances or the overall volatility was plus or minus 2%, plus or minus 3%, that sort of thing. So if you want to do that, what I'll do is I'll get rid of that field. And to make this an absolute value, I'm just going to type in ABS, which is the formula, which is the function that returns an absolute value. And now it gets rid of that negative in front of the 3.37. So I'm going to copy this all the way down. And now my percentages also no longer have positive or negative values because now it just tells me that it moved by this percentage, but it's not specifying in which direction, whether it's positive or if it was negative. So again, this is useful if you want to capture just the overall change, regardless of the direction. So there's a lot of different ways that you can, you, you can focus your analysis on. Now, one thing that can be helpful when you've got this many variances to deal with is to group them. So what I'm going to do is create a table here and let's say I'm going to put uh, percent change and then category. So 
let's say if something is 0%, then I'm gonna put it in category A. If it's 1%, B, 2%, C, and then anything 3% above will go to D. And what I can do here is use a simple VLOOKUP function, take this variance, and look up these values right here. So the column I want to pull from is column two. And because I'm not looking for an exact match, I'm okay with an approximate match. I'm just going to set this value to true. Hit enter. And now it tells me this variance of 0.08% falls into category A. And that's right, because it hasn't reached the 1% threshold yet. So I'm going to copy this all the way down. Whoops. And the one thing I want to do is obviously freeze my cells first. And now I've got my classifications based on those rules that I've set up. So I'm going to go all the way down, make sure, delete this extra one here at the bottom. And now I can, I, I've grouped my variances. Now, obviously this still does, still isn't terribly helpful for me because I'd have to look through all, all these all these rows and it's not easy to, to summarize this. But now that I've got it in groups, the one thing I can do is put it into a pivot table, which will quickly summarize it for me. So if I go to insert pivot table, and I'll select existing worksheet, select the location right here, hit OK, and then I'm gonna select the group and the group over here, get rid of the blanks. And you know, now I can quickly see how many fall into group A, group B, group C, group D. Another thing that I can do once it's in this format is put it into a chart. So again, go to insert and let's go just a simple bar chart. And just like that, I've got my grouping based on, based on the different, uh, different rules I've set up here, add data labels, and now I can visualize my data to see that the majority of the variances are really small. They fall into that smallest category of between zero and 1%, and that movements over 3% are extremely rare. And even two to 3% isn't all that common. So this is, this is one way where you can quickly analyze and, and summarize your data without having to you know, spend a lot of time creating formulas or going row by row or spending a lot of time filtering. Another thing that you could do with, with variances that, that's helpful is use conditional formatting. So if I were to select column D and go to conditional formatting and select data bars, and I find this one's useful just because with the color scales, it adds a whole bunch of colors and the it, it can be a bit uh, bit distracting with all those different colors. But if you go to data bars, it's it's a bit cleaner. It only shows the, 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 the items that have actual values in there. It doesn't, it's all going to be the same color. And so it's just going to quickly show you wh where the largest variances were, where the smallest ones were. So it's a quick way where you could visually review, okay, which days had a large variance, which ones had, had a small one. So just another way where you can visualize the data and if you're presenting it to somebody could could summarize that in a quick and easy way. So that's just a quick video on data analysis and hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching.